Um, Mr. Speaker, I wanted to talk just a little bit about the bills, the changes that were made um, during the conference committee uh, <clears throat> and start with uh, just one statement um, that uh, folks know I'm a frugal guy. Um, I have, a, we were just cleaning the house the other day and I've got a drawer full of aluminum foil pieces that I've saved over the time so that I could reuse them uh, at a future time. Uh, people on this floor also know that uh, I started my kid's college fund in hopes that she would someday go to college when I was about 22. And for folks that know, they know I don't have any kids. So I'm a planner. I like to plan ahead. I like to ensure that uh, my budget is tight and uh, smart and that uh, it provides for generations in the future, Mr. Speaker. This is a bill that um, starts to address that. Uh, it starts to address that in one critical way. And so I just say that I'd like to support the concept um, in that it says that we will preserve the earnings reserve at a uh, minimum of five and a quarter percent uh, for the next three years and another five percent uh, in year four. <laughs> However, Mr. Speaker, I need to let folks know why I'm going to be opposed to this bill today uh, in conference, the conference committee report today. And it's clear, Mr. Speaker, that the other body has a different intent in what uh, should move forward. And if I could just read briefly out of the fiscal note from Senate Bill 26 as it entered this body. Representative Kawasaki. Mr. Speaker, this legislation would set up a dividend amount of $1,000 for the next three years with the percent of market value <clears throat> set at five and a quarter percent of the value of the permanent fund. In fiscal year 2021, that's three years from now, the percent of market value would reduce to 5% and the dividend payout would be calculated at 25% of the percent of market value draw. Mr. Speaker, that's a smaller permanent fund dividend than I think people, uh, Alaskans, are wishing for. Um, <clears throat> the uh, permanent fund dividend, as many people know, lifts people out of poverty. According to the Institute of Social and Economic Research, between 15... Representative Kawasaki, I'm going to ask you to direct your comments to the changes between the two measures. And uh, I think I heard comments a moment ago that seem to reflect the earlier version, which is on par with uh, the rules which allow members to speak between the changes that come before the body in terms of the eventual vote to concur or not to concur. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, We've put in place for the last 35 years a way to pay out uh, both for government services, the things like education, like public safety, uh, roads, rails, runways uh, from the earnings. We have also designated um, <clears throat> since 1982, 35 years ago, the way we should also construct <clears throat> our permanent fund dividends. What is offered here today uh, as a conference committee substitute is a significant departure from that. And if I can just read uh, briefly, Mr. Speaker. President Kawasaki. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, um, this is a memorandum <clears throat> written in April 17th in 1979 from then Senator Clem Tillian, uh, from Governor, uh, to Senator Clem Tillian from Governor Hammond at the time. And I'll just paraphrase just one part. 50% of the income returned to the general fund, 50% 50, 50 of income for specific programs as designated by the legislature, such as guarantees for hydro projects. Re Representative Kawasaki, and I'm gonna enforce this with all members who choose to speak, please speak to the concurrence, the changes in the two measures, and I'm gonna ask members not to uh, be too lengthy in their comments uh, relative to the history of the permanent fund or this this bill, but uh, in the interest of going forward in a reasonable period of time. Representative Kawasaki. Thank you for the indulgence. Um, just that the, this conversation was that there should be a recognition that dividends should be paid to Alaskans. Um, we are changing this process while the same existing process works uh, in there and is, is part of uh, law and will remain part of law and remain part of statute. We're not changing that. We are adding to statute, uh, which I fear that uh, that is the way that this 31st legislature, the next legislature after us, uh, will take our actions today. Uh, I think it, 
I think this is um, the beginning of the end of the permanent fund dividend. And I feel that I can't support this measure before us um, uh, without some assurances that a permanent fund dividend will be paid out, uh, Mr. Speaker. Um, I think that uh, furthermore, the changes in this bill, which again, uh, <clears throat> which again, change the way that government is funded in the general fund, um, that those changes will set up a future legislature uh, to be in a, in a, uh, in fiscal, in fiscal chaos. They won't understand what is really meaning, meant to go forward when it comes to a permanent fund dividend. I think I know clearly what the other body had in mind. I don't know what this body has in mind, but I can't support the changes made by the conference committee, and I will be a no vote on changing the permanent fund payout. Thank you.